Hello guys, how are you? Good morning. So today, October 1st, we are now in October. Do you like the month of October? Yes or no? Si te gusta el mes de octubre? Mm, dime. So October 1st, hello, 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 hello. Yes, like this. Hello, hello, hello. So today, guys, uh, if you couldn't be with us in the class, remember, um, I have a video here for you that shows what we did, right? And 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 you can like send me your work and work and and, and, and do your homework. So today, guys, we started with this, with language. So I would like you to go to language, vea la sección de language en la página. That will be page number 89. So please go there, go to, go, go to page 89. So I will go there too, and I have it here, look at it. I have here already the page open. And it says here, comparative and superlative adjectives, right? No, I mean, this is not the one. 89, I'm sorry, it's here. Uh, fill in the chart below. Remember that yesterday we worked with any, no, some, lots of, plenty of, most, and all. So yesterday we worked on this. So now you are going to use these to complete this page, right? So, but first... Fill in the chart below using data you collect from your classmates and using fractions. The bottom number will be will always be the total number of students in your class. The top number will be the amount of people that fit the category. For instance, if there are 26 people in your class, imagine 26 are all of the students that, that um, are in your class, right? And 12 are girls, the fraction will be 12 26, right? Why? Because it says here that the bottom number, el número de abajo, siempre va a ser el número total de alumnos en la clase. Y el número de arriba será el número de personas que cabe en la categoría. Por ejemplo, aquí la categoría es chicas, girls, right? So, si hay 26 personas en tu clase y 12 son chicas, la fracción sería esta, 12, 26. Porque son 12 chicas de 26 que hay en el salón. So we're going to do this. Actually, we did this in the morning, right? Uh, boys and girls. So how many are boys and how many are girls? So you need to put here what um, the fraction, right? That represents boys in your class and girls in your class. Now, how many students like to eat pizza? You say, oh, five students like pizza. Have been out of the country. Que han salido del país, right? Que han ido a Estados Unidos, a Brasil, a Inglaterra, donde sea, pero donde ocupas y llevar pasaporte. So have been out of the country. Are in sixth grade. ¿Cuántos alumnos de tu salón están en sexto grado? Okay. Have met a famous person. ¿Y cuántos han conocido una persona famosa? Now that we have this, because in the morning, you know, we were in the class and we answer it. Use the data above to answer each of the following questions in a complete sentence using an adjective of quantity instead of a number. For example, if 1226 students are girls, you will write some of the students in my class are girls, right? Entonces aquí que vamos a responder las preguntas basándote en la información que pusiste en esta tabla, ¿cierto? Entonces eh, dice aquí que, por ejemplo, si 12, ni si 12 personas de 26 en mi salón son niñas, escribiría, algunos de los estudiantes en mi salón son niñas. Recuerda, ya vamos a utilizar estas palabras que vimos. Any, no, some, lots of, plenty of, most, and all, right? Entonces, ahí está. Esas son lo que vas a hacer. Vas a preguntar, tienes que preguntar a tus compañeros en Classroom que te den esta información para que tú saques ahora sí que el número correcto. Y después contestar, ¿no? How many students like to eat pizza? Yeah. How many students are boys? En, en, en la clase habíamos 13 chicos y 13 chicas. Entonces, ¿cuántos eran chicos? Entonces, most of some, right? Some of the students are boys, porque era pues, la mayoría, right? Or plenty, puedes poner también plenty of students, porque es más, muchos de los estudiantes, right? So here, there are zero pencils in my pencil case. Hay cero lápices en mi cajita de lápices. Entonces, ¿cómo pondrías? There aren't any. Yes, there are not any pencils. ¿Por qué no hay ninguno? And so on, right? So, read the questions. Please read the questions and answer them. And this is what we did in the morning in the language section. There you go. And then we went to the reading section. Look at it. We went to the reading section and we did what? On the reading section, please go to pages number 
47 and 49, right? So go to 47 and let's continue there. And I got here 48, I'm sorry. And Rich, going deeper, page 48. And here it says, Building the Great Wall was dangerous and difficult, but it now stands as an enduring symbol of the unity of China. Do you think the Great Wall should have been built, even though many people died in the process? If so, why? If not, how should the northern border have been protected? Right? So, ¿qué dice aquí? Construir la Gran Muralla fue peligroso y difícil, pero ahora es un símbolo de la unidad en China. ¿Crees tú que la muralla china debió haber sido construida, inclusive aunque mucha gente murió en el proceso? Si sí, sí, ¿por qué? Si piensas que no, ¿cómo crees que eh, las fronteras del norte hubieran sido protegidas? Si tú dices que no debieron haber construido la muralla china. Entonces, aquí escribes tu respuesta. And then we finish with this. If you have visited the Great Wall, right here it says, if you have visited the Great Wall as it was be being built, what do you think you will have seen? If you visited the Great Wall today, what do you think you would see, right? Draw two pictures and compare them on the lines below. So here, guys, uh, entonces dice aquí, si tú hubieras visitado la Gran Muralla cuando la estaban construyendo, imagínate que vas a viajar en el tiempo, ¿qué crees que verías? ¿Cierto? Entonces tú viajas en el tiempo y la están construyendo ahorita y tú estás ahí viendo cómo todos trabajan. Entonces, ¿qué verías? ¿Tú qué te imaginas? ¿No? Ya, ya una vez que leímos la lectura de la Gran Muralla. Si tú visitaras a la Gran Muralla hoy, ¿qué crees que verías? ¿Vale? Entonces, ahí tú dices, ¿qué crees que verías si tú la visitaras el día de hoy? Eh, dibuja aquí las figuras, dibuja aquí lo que crees verías si regresas en el pasado y ves cuando están construyendo la muralla china y que dibujarás aquí, que vas a ver cuando estén ahorita, ¿no? En estos días, si tú vas y la visitas. Y aquí la comparas, ¿no? O sea, escribes en el pasado, yo digo que vería, tú, tú, tú. En el presente, yo digo que voy a ver, yes. So, this is the activity for the language. Remember, it's page number 48. 48. There you go. And then, well, we went to Steam, right? Steam, go to Steam. And there we read pages number... ...156 and 157, please. So go there. Let's go to those pages, right? Remember, Steam, 157. And here it is. We are in Steam 156 and 157. So uh, today, guys, we read about chocolate matters, right? So I would like you to read the text. Look at these texts and answer the questions, right? Read the text. I'm sorry. We, here we are. Read the text. Chocolate matters, right? Entonces, la materia chocolate. Entonces, te van a explicar cómo se hace el chocolate y todo eso. But read it. Answer the following questions. What is the melting point of the chocolate? What is the, mate, the melting point of ice, the water? And if you heated a chocolate bar and a piece of ice, which would melt first? Why? Right? So this is it. Look at it. Entonces, aquí vas a leer esta, responde las preguntas. And finally, continue reading here. And you're going to answer these two questions, right? So this is what we did here in the land in, in in the steam section i'm sorry if you have any questions any doubts please go ahead and ask me right don't worry so i will see you then tomorrow take care right um have a great weekend and thank you